All right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, but this is gonna be kind of an inside outside video. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna put another tray underneath here. And right now we've got one, two, three trays. So we'll have a total of four. But in order to do that, I need to lift this off and see what's under here. Now, if you've been following, we've been having some moisture issues inside the house because none of our AC or heat has been running. So the humidity is really high in there, causing my worm bins to be high. So I'm expecting, unlike in the summer where there's barely anything down here, there to be a lot of stuff under here. So let's go ahead and lift this off and I'll put it over here, and then we're gonna clean what's ever in here and put it into the worm bin right here. So here we go. Now, as expected, I have a lot of castings and some worms down here, and this tray is meant to be a barrier between here and what you see down here, which is the basin. And I see a bit of a worm ball right here in the basin. So let's go ahead and take that worm ball and put it in. Now there is a little bit of liquid here. Typically, I don't see any liquid in here because I run my bins just slightly dry with just enough moisture that it can soak through all three and keep them all moist, but not have a lot of leachate down here. So let me just kind of clean this out and I'm gonna put them inside this worm bin right here. Now off camera, I'm gonna clean this out real good, but let's get this stuff over here and put it into the top of the worm bin. All right, so now you've seen what it kind of looks like underneath in the winter when it's humid for me. So this might actually be what happens to a vermi hut up north in the summer when they don't have as much humidity in the house. So let me finish cleaning these off and we'll bring this whole setup inside and we'll add the bottom bin and actually look at how each one of these layers are doing. We're back inside and ready to build our newest tray. I've cleaned out the basin and the barrier, so we are going to put the newest tray on here. And the reason why it's going on the bottom is because this is all sterile cardboard and I want it to get inoculated. So by having the other trays on top, all the drippings and etc., are going to inoculate this over the next several months. And of course, I'm going to make sure that this is wrung out. And earlier, I filled these up and added rainwater from my rain barrel in here. Now you see me squeezing these out because the consistency you want is that of a wrung out sponge. So these have been soaking in water for a few hours and I'm just making sure that they are wrung out. Maybe a drop or two comes out of them. And I'm just filling this as much as I can with the cardboard and the other trays are just going to go right on top. Now when they do go on top, they don't seal like a Lego or something like that. They actually have a little bit of gap, but the worms do not travel up. They, they can feel and sense the dry air and they never escape. I've had zero escapees from my vermi hunt. I'm just trying to get this level because the next tray is going to go on top. And as we put on each tray, we'll look and see how that level is doing. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next level we're putting on is what used to be the bottom. And this is the tray that was undergoing inoculation. So let's go ahead and dig in here and see how it is doing. Now it was down here just to be inoculated. I'll put down below how many days it's been under here. But the worms also like to go down here, and that's because this has a ton of moisture in it. So not only is this tray getting inoculated, it also has lots of worms, but it has had zero food scraps put in it, just bedding. Now something that I noticed as I was aerating this out is that it is extremely wet. So I'm going to add some dry cardboard down here and mix it up. That's, that'll also help me bring up the elevation. Now I'm not worried about this not being inoculated because all the rest of this part is and by mixing this together that will get it inoculated. But what it's going to do is it's going to take out some of this moisture which will help with both this layer and the layer below it that is pretty damp. Now that we have that nice and level, let's put on what was the middle tray. And this one is the one that is going to be harvested. So let's dig around here and aerate it out also. 
This looks like a peach seed, so I'm just going to put it in the current feeding tray. Now these castings are looking fantastic. In fact, I bet in a couple weeks we'll be ready to harvest this tray, and then I will be back to three trays on my vermi hut instead of four. But this is looking great. And you can see the worms stay in here even though it's almost 90% castings because they'll just keep eating and they like the moisture level. Worms have minds of their own. They'll go to whatever level they want. This looks like a piece of banana stem and I'll put that in the current active feeding tray. All right, and finally we're ready for the top level which is the current active feeding zone. We're gonna go ahead and feed, so I'll start digging in here. And last time we fed Kind of a hodgepodge of everything. We fed some orange peels, onions, spinach, potato skins, and those worms that were in that very bottom barrier have gone down to this level, so I'm going to be running into them. But let's go ahead and dig in here. I did put in some pasta shells, so I'm wondering how they're doing and if we're going to run into hot worms like we did in the tiny bin. So Let's go ahead and look in here. And right away, I am seeing tons of worms. And I'm seeing some of that tray, that compostable tray that was in here. So that's good. And just worms all over. Look at that, just all over the place. They are really gonna enjoy having a whole nother layer. Now it does feel moist, so I am still dealing with those issues that I have in the winter time, which is having the heat and air conditioner off so the humidity in the house is much higher than it is for us in the summer, which is ironic, right? Because I'm in Florida, so it's super humid down here, but it's super humid outside. Right now, my outdoor bin is just doing fantastic because it's slightly dry outside, and I can control the moisture on my own. But inside, I'm having just a little bit of issues, just a little bit more moist than I'm used to. But the worms seem to be doing fine. And certainly, there's a lot of people that run their bins a lot more moist than me. But look at that, just fantastic worms all over. All right, let's keep digging around and aerating here, and then we will set up the feeding zone. This looks like the onion. It's the top of it, so there's a little bit of bulk to it. So let me just peel this apart, help them get into it and eat it. It's definitely not their favorite food, because it looks like they're not really getting into it yet, but we'll go ahead and bury that. Just a good showing throughout. This bin, I'm estimating, has about four to 5,000 worms in it, but I could even be off there. It could have more. And it is a mix of blue worms and red wigglers. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up the feeding zone. And we're gonna give a little bit of a lighter feeding because I still see some food from last time. We had that bit of an onion. I don't see the citrus peels, the tangerine peels in here. There's just some bulky stuff. This looks like maybe part of the tray from a couple of experiments ago. So let's just set up a zone here and we will add our feeding and more bedding. All right, so in goes some dry bedding and then we'll add that little piece of onion and that piece of tray, a little piece. And here's what I had in mind for the feeding. It's all very fast food, some lettuce stalks, looks like a little bit of tomato, but this should go pretty quick and help them to take down and eat whatever is in here currently. And of course, we'll add some of our coffee. It's another food source for them. And then our grit, which is just pulverized eggshells. Now this is a much smaller feeding than we typically have. And that's just because I want them to get through the rest. It's a little bit moist in here, so we will let them kind of get things absorbed into the new paper that we added, and they should take care of this feeding, no problem. Now, throughout this video, we saw all the different layers and kind of how I run this bin with putting new trays on the bottom to get them inoculated with all the drippings from everything that's in here and allows the worms to go in and out, and that just helps get all kinds of microbes in there. So when I'm ready to start a new bin, all I've gotta do is take the tray off of here. Now in a couple of weeks, we will probably harvest out of here, and then this one will go on the second level. We'll take one of the ones from the bottom and put it on top and stop, start feeding it. So this tray is looking very good, and if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hit the like button, 
And I've got two other trays, the outdoor worm bin and the tiny DIY worm bin that you can watch. And I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.